Hello, this is Matt Singleton. Welcome to another episode of Bible. Matt. All right, uh, let me go ahead and read. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by the wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the, unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them that are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. May God bless the reading of his word. Uh, today I want to respond um, to a video I saw uh, with uh, Archbishop Shelby Spong. I might lovingly refer to him as uh, Sponge Bishop. <laughs> and uh, basically, um, I don't know if I'll be able to totally do this total justice. I haven't, uh, I had to uh, skip a couple things. Uh, I got kind of busy and stuff like that. So it's been a couple days since I saw the video, but I just wanted to kind of hit on a couple of notes. Uh, basically, um, the Archbishop is uh, claiming to uh, give us proper interpretation of the uh, New Testament. Now, one thing is, it, it's very sad if you're not a student of the Bible and you listen to a guy like that, you'll assume that he's a religious authority. I mean, after all, he wears a priestly collar. And he tells us not to believe in the Bible. He'll say, oh, well, I believe in my way, you believe in yours, because we can change what the definitions are. You know, um, the Bible calls the devil the god of this world, so I guess you could be a Satanist and say, I believe in God, but it wouldn't be the same God as the one I'm talking about. We have to be careful about the definitions of words. And that's just not uh, his mission. He claims to be a Christian authority, and he has absolutely no authority. Now, uh, some of these things are, there are evangelicals who would agree that he is an authority because of his place in the Episcopalian Church. But I do not believe that the Episcopalian Church is the church of the New Testament. One of the reasons being is that um, they go by the sacramental system of Rome. I've gone over this several times in the past, but, uh, you know, in essence, uh, they believe that uh, you get baptized as a baby and that you find your salvation there. Many times, you know, uh, I've heard such people as... Uh, George Herbert Walker Bush say that uh, he, he didn't really believe in being born again, that he was raised an Episcopalian. Um, there's, there's really no place for being born again in a sacramental system. They'll say, you know, the theologians, at least, I don't know about the common man, but the, the theologians at least will say that you need to uh, be born again uh, and you will be born again once you're baptized. Of course, they baptize babies. I was once at a bookstore, and I talked to a Roman Catholic woman, and we started uh, a discussion, and she said that, um, you know, she didn't understand what it meant to be born again, and she was very devout and very well-read, but it just doesn't have any place in their system. So, I go about, and this fellow says, basically, you know, let's get the authority out of the Word of God. He says, the Jew... He talks about, like, you know, the, the Bible is a Jewish book. And um, the Bible is a Jewish book, but it's a book for Jews and Gentiles, for people all over the world. You know, and um, I guess I could throw around a quick verse here about that, as Galatians 3.26. Of course, we just read a similar concept here. It said, um, it 
So there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. So it, it is a book for us all. Yes, it was written in a Jewish context, but here's the deception. He claims that um, the Jewish nature makes it so that we shouldn't take the Bible literally. Um, I mean, honestly, it just... If I were a betting man, that would definitely be the guy making up a lie. All right. Let's look at how the Jews would understand the scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 30. It says, um, this is Deuteronomy 30 verse 10. It says, If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in the book of the law, and if thou Turn unto the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul for this commandment which I command thee this day. It is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, Well, who should go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Well, who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. The word of God is rational. Like the word word in the Greek, uh, you have the thing called the logos, it denotes understanding and wisdom when we use the word logos. In Proverbs chapter 30, verse 5 and 6, it says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. And so when we start to add other teachings, what do we do? Well, when we start to add other teachings, then we try to call God a liar. So this man is basing himself up against the God of the Bible, and he says, no, 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 this is not the truth. I will be the prophet of God, and I'll tell you the truth. And, you know, if you've never read the Bible, I understand how, you know, some of those ideas can, you know, seem plausible. But once you've read the scriptures, it makes sense. I mean, there is a specific message, and... All over the world, millions of people are reading through the Bible. And they are preaching through the Bible. And they get a consistent message. And they understand what they're talking about. It says in uh, Colossians 2 verse 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world, not after Christ. The archbishop says that he has authority based on traditions but if his traditions were biblical they would raise up the Bible and they don't instead he says I have clothes now me I don't have clothes I mean I'm wearing something but it sure doesn't look very uh, you know expensive or shiny or particularly religious or anything like that so obviously uh, I wouldn't be a holy authority now, I've been ordained by men and who basically went to this idea that the Word of God is our source of authority. He's really preaching a different religion than Christianity. So, when we look at this stuff, you just have to understand this guy is not at all, I mean, at all Christian in any respect. Um, he claims authority by thinking men and scientists. Um, the ideas of man naked from revelation fall apart. There is no absolute source of authority or knowledge in the world of man's ideas. It's just a, a bumbling compulsion of chemicals. And they admit this and they believe this. And then they say, well, this is the truth and that's not. How can chemicals be true? Because after all, we're just flesh and bone. We came from monkeys, who came from fish, who came from rocks, who came from soup. It all came out of a bang, it came out of nothing. 
Um, he really is, uh, in, in the 50s and 60s, they would have called him what, what they call a pinko. And the pinkos were people who were uh, undercover communists. Uh, every one of his views stacks up with an evolutionary system. It doesn't stack up to Christianity at all. He does have a source of mysticism. And the mysticism was originally pagan. That's where he's trying to go here. Because he'll say, well, you know, this is Jewish. It's not Jewish. It's Platonic. This is like the philosopher of Plato where the whole world is not really real. You know, and they'll, they'll end up getting there. I mean, they'll, they'll say, well, we're all a bunch of atoms, and the atoms are just a bunch of energy, and that all came out of Big Bang, and that came from nothing, so what is it? It's all an illusion. It all, I mean, when you break it all down, it all becomes nothing. There is no idea. There is no substance. It's my idea versus your idea, your interpretation versus everybody else's interpretations. It breaks down to nothing. So... As he goes by there and he says, These are this is the truth, this is the authorities, and anything the Bible says is wrong. And he says, But no, I'm a Christian. No, you're not. I mean, honestly, the idea that a man can stand and be the man of God because he has a collar is sickeningly stupid. It doesn't matter what you wear. It matters if you have God on your side, and God doesn't side with people just because they wear religious clothes or, or they know all the right talk and the right lingo. That's what we have here. We have all these non-Christians trying to steal, trying to, to con their way to power by usurping the authority of God. It is uh, the third commandment, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's what they do. You strike out against God saying, oh, I'm a holy man, I'm a holy man, you must listen to me. Don't listen to God. Well, you can ask a fellow uh, who is Jewish named Elijah how that story goes. It doesn't matter how many prophets that were set up against him, they were all slain. And why? Because they didn't have God. They say, well, the truth is not the word of God, it's something beyond it. Which means what? It means that this is not true. It means there's some sort of higher truth. And the higher truth is found in men who deny God. But ultimately, those men don't have the higher truth. We talk about Einstein. But his whole theory of relativity is based off the speed of light. And the speed of light is not a constant. They've all said it was a constant until they found out otherwise. There's nothing totally totally, utterly consistent in man's worldview. So, who is this guy? He's really a, a false teacher, a proselyte. Possibly Antichrist. Um, I'd have to remember where he went with that. I know that many of his ilk have said that there is a, a Christ that we worship and that there is the Jesus of history saying that the Son of God did not come in the flesh, and that is utterly Gnostic. It's Gnosticism. And that is Antichrist. Look at what it says here in 1 John chapter 4, verse 3. He says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Now, if you knew the Bible, you'd know what I was saying. Some of you may say, well, you're being vindictive. You're being, you know, so dogmatic. How could you believe this? Well, I could believe this because it was taught to me from my God through the scriptures. And yes, there have been men who have helped me out along the way. And every one of them, I believed what they said unless or until the Bible contradicted them. And I believe all the prophets, but if the prophets ever say things in contradiction to the Word of God, then I disbelieve those things. You know, Peter was shown to be a sinner in the Bible. Paul called himself the chiefest of sinners. He'd go around killing Christians. 
or having them persecuted. But the truth didn't come from men, it came from God. And if you have a relationship with God, then you'll know that. But if you do not have God in your heart, you'll never be able to read the Holy Word. Because this is holy and you are not. And so your mind will be so dis disdainful about what it says that you're going to warp it one way or the other and just try to serve your own purpose. What you have to come down to is you have to say, what is the truth? Now, you have to ask yourself before you get to that point. Is your will towards the truth or is your will towards power? Maybe you just painted yourself a world that suits you and puts you at the center. And one where you only care about yourself and you only care about your own gain. But one day you're going to hit a wake-up call. This life is not meant to last. What are you going to do then? Where's your money going to go? Where's your power going to go? Did you even get that money or power? So you have to ask yourself, do I have a will of power or a will of truth? You start asking about the truth. The whole world believes in power. Let me say this, and I'll probably close out with it. If I can find it. It says, 1 John 2.15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever.